Hello and welcome to our tenant of a series in the Blender Game Engine. In this video, I want to show you how to create an on-screen counter that's going to be an overlay on top of your game. In the last video, though, we learned how to count, and we created this exact file in which, if I play my game and you press the up arrow on your keyboard, you're controlling my cube, the character, and you can collect coins. And when you touch every coin, it vanishes and it adds to a counter property or a counter variable. And in my game, once you collect all five coins you see the monkey. In other words, you win the game. If you want to go ahead and download this exact file, you'll find a link to that in the description area below, and you can follow along with me in this video. Let's go ahead though, and I'm going to add a new scene, and that's going to act as an overlay scene, which will show things like, well in my case, a counter for my coins. You might also think of this as a place where you would put a heads up display if you were making a game that needed more things, or the inside of maybe like a cockpit. Um, you could also make other things like health bars or hearts or anything like that be overlaid on top of your playable game. Let's go ahead though and add a new scene. So I'm going to press this plus button and I'm going to create a new empty scene. So I'll click on new. I'm going to name this new scene HUD. So I'll type HUD, that stands for heads up display, I believe. Uh, of course, now you can switch back to your game if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and set up this HUD screen. What we want in here is we need a camera and we need a text object to act as our counter. So I'm going to press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a new camera right there and it's rotated by default. So I'll press alt R to clear rotation and I'll drag it straight up on the Z axis. And if I press zero now to go through my camera view, or of course you can go to view and camera, that's numpad zero if you have a numpad we can now lay out what we want to have overlay on top of our normal game. Now, here's the thing though. I'm going to go back to my just normal orthographic user view. Um, this camera is a 3D camera and it shows things with a depth. And that means that you might have things closer to the camera. They'll appear, appear larger than things farther away from the camera. Now that's good for a 3D game, but for a menu screen or an overlay, you probably don't want that. So with the camera selected, I'm going to go over here to the properties window to the camera tab. I'm going to change my lens from a perspective lens to an orthographic lens. And orthographic basically just means uh, essentially two-dimensional. In other words, things don't get larger as they get closer to your camera and they don't get smaller as they get farther away. That's what orthographic means. Once I do that, I'll go through my camera lens again by pressing zero and I'm going to add some objects. I'm just going to add one actually. I'll press shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a new text object. And a text object is again pretty special. It's not a mesh yet. It actually, if I press tab to go into edit mode, I get this cursor and you can press backspace or delete on your keyboard to uh, get rid of the text. I'm just going to type the number zero because our counter is going to start at zero and it's then going to work up from there. So I'll press tab to go back into object mode and I might want to scale this down a little bit. So I'll tap S and I'll put it up here in the corner. Now what happens though if my counter is right there and let's say it's counting and it goes up to one, two, three, four, five. What if it gets up to 10? Well, then it'll get pushed off screen. I don't want that. So with my text object selected, I'm actually going to go over here to the font tab and I'll scroll down and I'm going to change the paragraph align. Right now, just like normal English text, it's aligned left, but I'm going to align it to be right so that um, the cursor will be over here now. It'll just type in that direction. So if I add like another digit, you'll see that it goes in the right direction. So uh, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to put it right about there. In fact, though, what I've found is that when you have an orthographic camera, it actually cuts off the sides. I'm not exactly sure why. I think that's because you're overlaying an orthographic camera on top of a perspective camera in your normal game. So I think it doesn't quite um, work properly or, or isn't compatible. So what I find is that the top is fine, but you have to move um, it in. So you kind of have these invisible margins on the side that you have to uh, keep in mind. Okay, now this text object has to be smart. It has to know that we can uh, tell the text in it to change and it's actually going to act as our counter. So we're going to add two properties to this text object. Uh, to do that, I'm going to have it selected. I'm going to go down here to my logic editor window. I'll press N on my keyboard or this little plus and I'm going to add two things. You'll notice that on most other objects, you have game properties and you can add a game property to a mesh or even the camera. But on a text object, you get two. And so I'm going to add actually a text game property, which is a special property that can actually access the string or the characters in this text object when it's not a mesh. And so now we can access that. And I'm going to add a game property. 
Now, if you think back to the last video, in which we created a counter, if I go back to my uh, game scene for, for a sec, and I'm gonna go and press zero to get out of my camera, we have this empty object. And this empty object, if you think back to the last video, it's sort of our eye in the sky. It keeps track of everything to do with our counter in the game. So if I have that object selected, you'll see that it has a counter variable. And each one of our coins, it sends a message to that empty object when, when it gets hit by our main character. When each coin gets hit by our main character, it uh, disappears, it ends itself. That's what this brick right here does. And it uh, sends out a message to that empty and it shouts, hey, coin. And then it's empty, it receives that uh, coin message. And what it does with that is it adds one to its own property. Well, I'm gonna not really use this entity anymore. I'm going to use that text object instead because that's gonna be an ever-present object as well. So over here in my um, HUD scene, with that object selected, I'll press zero and I'll head again to get back to my camera view. I'm gonna make a game property, which I just did. It's called prop. I'm not gonna use prop. I'm gonna use counter. That's what I'll name that variable or that property. And it's gonna be an integer, which means it's just a counting number, a single number that can count that doesn't have any decimal places. And it's gonna be zero. That works. So what happened in the last video to make it count? Well, that empty object in our other scene, our game scene, had a sensor. It listened for a message that it got. And that message that it got was coin exclamation mark. And that exclamation mark was just there for fun. You don't have to actually put that. Um, in the actuator side here, we have to add a couple of things. We have to add one every time it hears this coin to its own new counter integer variable. And then it has to say, hey, take the text property, whoops, take the text property of this text object and make it equal to our counter variable. So those two things we have to do. I'm gonna do that now. So I'm gonna add an actuator and it's gonna be a property actuator. That means it's gonna do something with a property. I'm gonna connect these over. We're going to um, add to our property called counter and we're gonna add one. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So when it hears this message coin, it's gonna add one to counter. But we also need to make sure that after we do that, it's gonna change this property. It's gonna update this property to whatever this counter variable is now. So I'm gonna add a second property actuator and I'll connect it up because we're doing two things at once here. And I'm gonna use the uh, assign. That's by default, that's great. I'm gonna assign that other text property, which, and by the way, you can only ever have one text property. You can either add or remove it. I'm not sure why it's just not there by default. Um, you can assign this text property to be equal to counter. Now, we can have it equal to like anything we type here, but if I type in the exact word counter, the same name as my variable, that will work. So let's quickly just update these names. I'm gonna say uh, message coin, just to uh, see what these uh, bricks are. I'm gonna say add one to counter. Uh, these don't really actually matter, they're just kind of logic brick names. And I'm going to say update HUD text. Okay, so hopefully you can tell what all those things mean. Let's go ahead and go back to our game scene because we need to actually overlay this scene on top of the game. So I'm going to go back to my game. Um, I'll press zero to go back to my just user view. Now, here's the thing. When my coin gets hit by our character, it shouts out uh, coin, but it's only shouting that message out too empty. That's what this two thing means. Well, I don't want that anymore because we're not going to actually use this empty anymore. So I'm going to just delete that. And unfortunately, I have to delete that on all of my coins. That's why it's often a good idea to not specify a target uh, right away unless you've really planned things out. So now those coins will show to everything and that's great. How do we overlay a scene? Well, in order to have multiple scenes happening at the same time, you have to be looking through your camera. And if I press zero on my numpad or go to view uh, camera. This camera does not work well. It does not point it in the right direction. So I'm going to press N on my keyboard to bring up this panel or I can press the plus. I'm going to go to the view uh, section and I'm going to select lock camera to view. What this does is it lets me actually orbit or zoom or change my view just by orbiting in my camera. If I don't have that checked, it just breaks out of the camera. So I'll have that checked. Um, that looks pretty good to me. Simple, simple. Great. Now, 
with my camera selected. My camera right now, if I select it just by clicking on the border, or I'll divide that window to two, and TN, if I select my camera, either way, it's the same thing. I'm gonna add a new sensor for always. We always wanna have an overlay here. Again, well, that's with the camera selected. Now, what do we wanna do always? We wanna do an overlay scene. Well, there's actually an actuator for that. If I add an actuator for scene, I can now, instead of restarting a scene or setting a scene, like going to a win or lose screen, I can add an overlay scene. Yeah, it's right there. It's very, very easy. I'm gonna connect these two things, so it's always gonna be overlaying a scene. What scene do I wanna overlay? I wanna overlay HUD. It's as easy as that, almost. Let's go ahead and see how this works. I'm gonna press uh, T and N to hide that all, and I'm gonna make this a little bit wider so we can see it. Let's go and check that out. I'll press P on my keyboard. Great, I can see my game. I had that zero at the top right corner, and I can press the up arrow on my keyboard, and it counts. Everything works. I can count to five, and I can see my monkey head. Little problem though. I can still see my counter over my next scene. And that's a little bit funny because you would think that this is a different camera, and it is a different camera in the monkey scene, but we actually have to specify when we want to get rid of that, that uh, second HUD overlay scene. So what I'll do is with the camera selected, and this is why having a coin is always a, a good thing, um, when I get to the point where my counter on my HUD counter is equal to five, in other words, if I go back to my HUD and I select my counter and I check to see, hey, actually it's not here, my mistake. It's in my game. This empty is still useful. It still defines the win of my game. If the property counter is equal to five, we actually have two counters going on here um, and that's okay. Let's go ahead and in fact, and I'm gonna delete this empty that I don't need anymore. I'll press X, but that means we can't win the game anymore. If I press P and go up, it's gonna count, but I don't win. We have to define a win uh, scenario in which we have a counter variable equal to five. So I'm gonna go back to my HUD. I've deleted that empty, uh, which was now useless. This counter text object is gonna have a sensor to detect if our counter on the text object, again, this counter variable belongs to this text object, is equal to five. We don't need two counter variables anymore. That's why I got rid of the empty. I'm gonna add a property sensor. The property sensor, we're gonna check to see if counter is equal to five. That's how many we want to win. I'm gonna add an actuator. Uh, the actuator is going to switch my scene. Um, so we're gonna say scene uh, right there. And I'm gonna connect that to that. So now if our counter is equal to five, we're gonna switch over and we're not gonna restart the scene. We're gonna set the scene to win. But this is where we have to add one more thing. When our counter is equal to five, that's what this means, we wanna set it, the scene to the win scene, but we also wanna get rid of the overlay. And so what I'll do is I'll add a new actuator. I'm gonna say scene and I'm gonna end the scene. And that'll actually end the overlay too. So I'm going to remove scene, and I'm gonna remove HUD. And that's how you can get rid of a HUD when you flip over to a new screen, like a windscreen in your game. And I think it should work even though the remove scene is actually in this scene, it should still work fine. So I'll go back to my game screen. I think everything should work, I'll press P. I have my uh, text overlay, I can play my game and hopefully it's gonna win. All right, so what's happening here? Well, I actually paused the video and I did a little bit of troubleshooting for about a minute and I figured it out, it's quite simple. Because we put that end scene action onto that counter in our HUD, I'll flip back over to that. I'm gonna go and change my scene to HUD. Because we put this remove scene HUD on, in the HUD itself, it actually didn't understand that. We're setting our new scene. We're basically exchanging our HUD scene for the windscreen and it, it just, just does not work, unfortunately. It's an easy fix though. What I can do is, yes, I wanna set my scene to win and yes, I wanna remove my HUD, but because this instructions or these instructions are not in the game, which is what we wanna actually get rid of, we have to remove our game screen as well. So it just means we have to add one more remove scene actuator here. So I'll click on add actuator and I'm gonna say scene. I'm gonna say remove scene. 
and I'm gonna click on scene, and I'm gonna remove the game. So what that means is we're setting the scene to win and then we're getting rid of the two other things that are currently on the screen. And that's the difference there. If this object had been uh, in our main game, like that empty that we had, it would have worked just fine to uh, set the scene. But again, you have to compromise when you're trying to do everything in one place. In other words, have all of your variables, uh, your integer counter and your text variable in one place. So this will work. I'll go back to my game and then I'll press P. I'm going to collect my coins and then the counter disappears and I see the monkey head, which means I've won. Uh, that'll be it for this video. Uh, what I'll do is I will go back to my HUD. I'll let you see this code again. I'll make this window full screen um, and I'll show you everything that there is there. Uh, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.